Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install an iota watt home energy monitor. I looked at a couple of different energy monitors when deciding which one I wanted for my house, and this is the one I ended up going with for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's open source, so there's a plus. And the other ones that are on the market right now have an auto sensing feature, which from what I'm reading isn't all that accurate. I've seen a lot of installations where people just directly mount it to a piece of plywood and then have the wires sticking out. That's not what I wanted in my case, so I got one of these plastic boxes to store it in. So let's get into it. Full disclosure, I have no affiliation with IOTA Watt and purchased everything here myself. Before getting any further, I want to state that this project requires working around live electrical circuits. If that's not something you're comfortable with or capable of doing, hire an electrician. The IOTA Watt is made up of a central unit that processes incoming data, which receives signals from a variety of current transformers that are hooked up to electrical circuits. I don't know all the signs behind them, but the current transformers sense the magnetic field around a wire and transform that into an amperage reading. Multiplying the amperage times a reference voltage, the IOTA Watt then can express the power used by the circuit. You can read more about how these work on the IOTA Watt website. Your configuration will likely be different than mine, but for my panel, I bought two 200 amp current transformers for the main power feed, two 100 amp current transformers for my workshop sub panel, and 10 50 amp current transformers for the other circuits in my house. When you unwrap these, you'll want to note down the model number for the CTs you're using, as these are used by the IOTA Watt later in setup. Also note that some of these CTs may have a piece of protective paper inside the clamping surfaces, which will need to be removed prior to use. I mentioned previously that I put my IOTA Watt inside this plastic case, which I got at the home center. This one is meant to be used to store parts, so I'm taking out the dividers. The IOTA Watt is powered by a USB charger and also takes input from a 9 volt source. I'm drilling two holes in the plastic box to allow these to pass through. I then use a deburring tool to remove the leftover bits of plastic from these holes. This box doesn't really need all four clasps, so I removed two of them. I'm going to route the CT wires through conduit, and since this plastic box isn't really meant for this purpose, I need to make some modifications. mount the box to the wall, I'll be affixing a piece of wood to the concrete using some Tapcom screws.
These knockouts on the electrical panel can be a bit of a pain to remove, but these ones came out using a combination of a flathead screwdriver and a pliers. I'm now measuring for the 3 quarter inch conduit that will route the CT wires to the iota watt. This will obviously differ for your particular situation, so I won't go into great detail on how I do this. You'll notice on the current transformers that they have arrows stamped into the plastic. These indicate the orientation of the CT with response to current flow, and they should be oriented properly when installed. Check the IOTA watt installation documentation for more information on this. Now it's time to feed the CT wires through the conduit and start hooking things up. I start with the two CTs for the mains power, which are hooked up to inputs 1 and 2 on the iota watt. Some of these clamp-on CTs can be a bit tough to open, so I used a putty knife to open the clamp. Careful that you do not break off the plastic tabs. After that, it's just a process of hooking up the remaining CTs to the circuits you want to monitor, being sure to note which CT and circuit corresponds to which input channel. When you're all done, it's a good idea to bundle the loose wires with zip ties to keep everything neat. With the CTs installed in the panel, the physical installation of the IOTA watt is done. We'll now move on to the software setup. When receiving the IOTA watt unit, it should have no prior connection to a Wi-Fi network, and you'll find it as a Wi-Fi device on your phone. Connect to it with password IOTA watt, and then go into Settings and Manage Router to continue configuration.
tap configure Wi-Fi and select the network you want the IOTAWA to use and then enter the password. At this point, the IOTAWAT should have network connection and you can finish setup on a desktop computer. It may be helpful to have a tab open with the IOTAWAT documentation, docs.iotawatt.com, to follow along with. Enter address iotawatt.local to access the setup options. The first thing to set up is your time zone and whether you use daylight savings time. Next is to set up the various inputs. First is the 9 volt reference, which is provided by a wall wart type power supply. If you got yours from IotaWatt directly, be sure to select the proper one in the setup options. Inputs 1 and 2 are the mains power, which use the 200 amp CTs. Refer back to the model number you wrote down earlier and select a proper one from the list. My inputs 3 and 4 are for my workshop, which use the 100 amp CTs. After that, the rest of my circuits are monitored by 50 amp CTs. Certain circuits, such as an air conditioner or an electric stove, will use 240 volt power with no neutral. For these, you can monitor the circuit with one CT on only one of the power wires, then select double to properly record the power used by the device. Once all the inputs are set up, click on status to see all the power being used by your monitored circuits. Some circuits may have this arrow next to them if you installed the CT on the wrong orientation. It's not a problem, just click reverse on the CT's setup options. Now it's time to create some outputs, which is a powerful way to use the data gathered by your IOTAWAT. One obvious output to create is total power, which is the sum of both mains. Another one is what I call balance, which is the total power minus all the monitored circuits, showing how much power is being drawn by those circuits not monitored. Using IotaWatt's built-in Graph Plus, it's very easy to visualize the data. The IOTAWAT also allows for outputting data to other web services, but that's better seen on the IOTAWAT documentation. Long story short, these web services provide some very powerful visualization tools for those interested. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative and instructional. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer as best I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.